Welcome back, Flare community. I've got a treat for you today. We're going to be discussing a key part of the Flare network ecosystem, the FTSO, and more importantly, how you can use the FTSO to gain passive income on the Flare network. What is the FTSO? The FTSO, or Flare Time Series Oracle, provides externally sourced data estimates to the Flare network in a decentralized manner. It does so by leveraging the distributed nature of the network and its participants. As we know, various digital assets such as XRP and more recently Litecoin can be converted into their F asset equivalent on the Flare network effectively transforming them from a Turing incomplete asset to one with smart contract capabilities. For F assets to be minted on the Flare network, Spark has to be provided as collateral. For example, to convert one XRP into FXRP, you may need to stake 2.5 times the value of the XRP worth of Spark. So where do you get the data input for this conversion and to calculate the ratio? This is a job for the Flare Time Series Oracle, which provides externally sourced data estimates to the Flare network in a decentralized manner. For example, the FXRP system requires the Spark to XRP price to calculate the Spark collateral. A centralized system would, for instance, take the price from an exchange, updating the price at regular time intervals. But a decentralized system relying on a centralized data feed would essentially render it centralized itself. The FTSO provides a decentralized solution to this problem, and it is essentially a heartbeat of numerical data flooding the network with accurate reliable data. A time series is how we refer to a specific data feed, for example the spot price of XRP that has already been processed by the FTSO. This data point is now available to use by smart contracts running on the Flare network. The FTSO will be responsible for providing accurate time series for multiple data sets at regular time intervals to be used within the Flare network. Where does the data input for the Flare time series oracle come from? In the example of the Spark to FXRP Flare time series oracle, the price is updated by taking price estimates from both holders of Spark and holders of FXRP. By virtue of holding either Spark or FXRP, both of these groups have an implicit stake in the system, i.e. an incentive to act honestly, as accurate pricing maintains the system integrity and utility. To summarise the role of the FTSO, at regular time intervals, token holders submit their estimates to the FTSO, from which the token price is computed in a decentralised fashion, ready to be used on the network. How do price estimates get submitted to the Flare Time Series Oracle? Each address can submit their own vote, which results in a weighted distribution over prices at a given time, where the weight is related to the amount of tokens held by a given address. Let's take a look at an example to help visualize the process. Let's say we have four users that wish to participate in a round of voting for a particular asset pairing. Darren Moore Jr. with one token, King Solomon with two tokens, my man Jungle Inc. with three tokens, and Kevin Cage with two tokens. Each of them submit the following prices. Darren, a three, Solomon, a four, Jungle, a five, and Kevin Cage a 6. This effectively corresponds to a total of 8 votes. 25% off the top and 25% off the bottom of the total votes are then discarded, 
i.e. the upper and lower two verts, resulting in a truncated price distribution. Finally, the oracle estimate can be computed as the median of the resulting distribution, i.e. 5. This price is the output of the oracle for this verting round. Why should I vert? You want to vert because if the provided estimate is close enough to the oracle output, then a reward is earned. This allows participants to actively gain spark tokens and incentivizes them to not only provide data estimates, but to provide good estimates. Crucially, this reward mechanism transfers value from people who do not participate in the system or who participate in a malicious fashion to people who provide utility to the network. Where do the rewards to provide data estimates come from? Well, this is something which many people don't actually know. Spark token is actually inflationary. Now before you panic, there's no reason to sell every spark you earn. The precise amount of spark tokens minted for reward is a network governance parameter, which is initially set at 10% of spark tokens in circulation per annum. As mentioned in a previous video, spark holders govern the network. If the majority of spark holders were to agree that this should be reduced, then that is exactly what would happen. As for right now, I personally believe that this is necessary to provide the incentives to those who are looking to support the Flare network. What if I don't want to provide data to the network? It is natural that token holders may want to delegate this task to an entity who they believe will do a great job. More generally, the verts for an oracle and the verts for governance can be delegated to another address without transferring the tokens themselves. This results in the potential for an ecosystem of data providers to the Flare time series oracle, who would retain a fraction of the award won in exchange for providing good signals. Any Spark or F asset holder could choose to delegate their verts to whoever they believe will provide honest verts. The Oracle signal provider might take a fraction of the earned reward in exchange for their service. This therefore provides a way in which Spark holders can earn a passive income for as long as they hold the Spark token. I will now show you a short interview with Flare Network's CEO, Hugo, who will further explain how Spark holders can gain rewards. Will there be a way to earn with the Spark token? Absolutely. So uh, sort of low risk or zero risk really way of, uh, obviously, unless you, you mess up how you do it. Uh, 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 pretty much there's no, there's no risk to uh, participating in the Oracle system. There's no mm -hmm. slashing. It, there's no, it's not asking you for money. It doesn't ask you to send your token anywhere. So uh, we hope that many wallets and many exchanges will... Um, uh, essentially integrate with the uh, Oracle system to allow people to uh, essentially delegate the votes that are attached to their tokens mm. uh, to whichever Oracle providers or whichever data providers they wish to uh, delegate to. Um, that's something we have had many conversations with people about. It's something we are pushing. It's something that some of our hardware wallets that are listed on our page already uh, specify, and it's, it's something we're talking to exchanges about actively. So uh, that's really the first way for people to um, participate. Uh, and we would expect most parties that provide those kind of delegation services, especially data providers to take a small fee, a reasonable fee, you know, 10% of anything they earn, maybe 20%. It's, it's up, to, up to them and it's up to the market. It's not something we set. Um, but that's a, that's a great way to participate and actively encourage people to participate in that. Uh, the more people that participate in that, the, the better quality the data signal will be and the yeah. more decentralized. I hope this particular video was helpful in understanding a key component of the Flare network, the Flare Time Series Oracle, FTSO. 
Have a great day everyone. Thanks for watching. I'm out.